FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. This is Kerry Lutz. And it's time for another Triple Lutz Report. And this is episode number 363. The date is September 10th, 2014. And, well, Detroit, the bankruptcy trial was going on uh, before Judge uh, Stephen Rhodes of the uh, Michigan Bankruptcy Court. Uh, But something happened. It got put on hold. Major creditor Sincora, which is a bond insurer, and they were they were basically in line to lose four hundred million under Detroit's plan, and pretty much unsecured creditors are supposed to be treated equally. Classes of creditor creditors in bankruptcy cases are supposed to be treated equally. The the pensioners, uh, other than the fire and police pensioners were going to lose four and a half percent of their payouts. And, and then they were going to basically lose their cost of living adjustments. And Sincora was the, was the squeaky wheel pretty much. And uh, Rhodes threatened uh, Sincora's lawyers with sanctions after a scandalous and defamatory filing against Chief U.S. District uh, Judge Gerald Rosen and attorney Eugene Durker, who helped arrange an $816 million bailout of pensions that also prevented the sale of valuable art. Well, like I say, Squeaky Wheel gets the oil. now. Sincora is going to get uh, get an interest in the tunnel that goes between Detroit and I guess it's Windsor, Ontario. They'll get that for 20 years in interest, as well as a, a city parking garage. And for that, they're withholding their objections. Like I say, they were the, the really loud and obnoxious creditor, which is their right. Let's face it. They're basically getting screwed in this bankruptcy. It'll probably save them two hundred million. That's the cost of peace. That's what you do in these uh, in these bankruptcies. Oh, by the way, just in case you didn't hear, we're having a webinar. Robert, Ian, and I, Liberty Mastermind webinar. It's going to take place September twenty fourth at nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested, it's free. Most important word in the English language, free. All you have to do is sign up in advance. Just go over to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. You will see the graphic in the upper left-hand corner of the site. Click it, go over to the site, and just sign up your name, email address, all that good stuff. And you'll hear from us. We've also got a mystery guest who shall, at this point, go nameless and you know we'll be taking questions from you just sign up probably have a provision where you can send in your questions early and also be taking questions at the webinar and i think you'll find it very helpful and perhaps uh, profitable who knows but uh, i think i think you'll find it very useful so go ahead sign up now and a couple weeks the attendance is limited. It's going to be cut off automatically when it hits the number. I don't know exactly what it is. Robert set it up. So just hurry up and sign up now. Also, you want to support the show, clubfsn.com, clubfsn.com. You know, premiums get handed out automatically depending how much you put in, anywhere from a dollar to $10 a month. It all helps. We're expanding here. Want to set up this video channel and the streaming radio? It all helps. Uh, really appreciate it. Clubfsn.com. While you're at uh, financialsurvivalnetwork.com, you can sign up for our Twitter feed, for Facebook, for YouTube's, all that stuff. 
just go over there. If I haven't told you before, you know that uh, Financial Survival Network, uh, through the dedicated hard work of our webmaster, Stefan, he's putting together articles, dozens of them each day from guys like David Stockman's Contra Corner, from uh, Simon Black's Sovereign Man, Zero Hedge, we're big Zero Hedge followers, Jan Scoyles, uh, Martin Armstrong, we're always posting his work, and and dozens, actually hundreds of other websites. It's really your one-stop source for all the alternative financial news that you need to hopefully make sound decisions and figure out what's going to happen next. And especially if you're interested in what's going on in the Ukraine, what's going on in the South China Sea, and what's going on in the Middle East, you're just not going to find it in the mainstream media. So financialsurvivalnetwork.com, we kind of tie it all together and you'll you'll get a good idea of really what's happening, as well as you'll see uh, all of my most recent interviews on there, as well as the archives from all 2000 plus interviews that I've done over the past three years. So urge you to go over there. So getting back to Detroit, the path is cleared and, you know, creditors rights. Well, the creditors rights are always subject to negotiation. Remember that. So the trial is going to resume next uh, week sometime. And probably at that point, There'll be more witnesses, but you can expect it to sail through because, look, uh, everybody wants this thing over with, and they're going to knock off roughly $7 billion of the $18 billion in debt that they had. Will it be enough? Will they wind up coming back again? Probably at some time in the future, but it ought to hold them for a few years, and we will see what's going to happen after that. Hey, if you remember... When we had the last Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Vegas, I mentioned that there was a slot machine in the MGM Grand that hadn't paid off a jackpot in 20 years since the MGM Grand was opened. And I put in a couple hundred bucks. Of course, I didn't win it. Here we are. Months later, somebody finally hit and that slot machine is amazing. It's still an electromechanical slot machine. Nothing digital about it. Uh, you put money in and the reels actually moved and the paint was fading on it. It wouldn't even accept new $100 bills because that's how old the, the bill scanner was on it. And a New Hampshire couple hit a $2.4 million jackpot and... They had put a hundred dollar bill into the machine. It was called the lion's share slot machine and they hit it. So I think they're actually going to get that slot machine too, which is pretty cool. I thought so. Unfortunately I didn't get it, but uh, somebody's got to win. Right. So at least, uh, at least they go home happy. And there was a story. I don't know if you caught this, but in Venezuela, they got shortages of everything due to the success of their socialistic government. This guy, Nicolas Maduro, took over from Hugo Chavez. So now you're going to go there, get fingerprinted to make sure that you're not hoarding or smuggling food. And, you know, they're rationing oil. And they've got soldiers on hand. And you see the pictures of the supermarkets there. It looks like it looks like former Soviet Russia. I mean, they've got nothing there. Kind of looks like uh, Cuba, actually. And, you know, it's just, uh, just the natural outcome of socialism. So what's happening with gold and silver? Well, they're getting slammed down. Gold's at uh, about 12.46 and a half. Silver right around 1893. Uh, when we look Go over to Charles Nenner, says, write what he predicted for this month, tradable low coming mid to end of September. And then he's saying, 
if this isn't uh, the beginning, it's very close to the beginning of gold and silver's run up. So, look, uh, we know about the manipulation. You know about it. It's been documented. We even have even have uh, information now from the CME that central banks are big, big customers of the CME, which is the leading futures and options exchange in the world. Why are they customers? Why are they buying futures and options? Good question. Uh, I'll let you fill in the blanks there, but but there must be a reason why central banks are buying futures. <laughs> I can't. I just can't understand it. But maybe you can figure it out and fill me in. <laughs> Here's a great story. Uh, public schools are forcing students to to start with meatless Mondays, and it's uh, it's just great, you know, all in the name of good health. And it's an international campaign launched in association with the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. It was founded by Sid Lerner, a long term, a long time Madison Avenue ad exec. And the goal is to convince people to choose to give up meat one day each week because as the Meatless Monday website explains, it's fantastic for the planet. And who knows, maybe it'll drive down the price of cattle and the price of hamburger meat, which is now at record highs. And I don't know how the kiddies feel about it, but uh, probably not such a bad thing. But do you want the government forcing you, picking your dining choices for you? If you're like me, the answer is probably no. And we go to uh, Europe and Russia is going to start cutting back natural gas exports to Poland. They just cut them by 24% in the past two days. Deutsche Bank says that the bubble must go on to sustain the cl- the current global financial system. <laughs> yeah, well, there's news for you. I would have never believed it. I didn't know we were in a bubble. I'm glad that they let me know about that. Now I'm pretty sure about it. Um, <laughs> just crazy things going on in the world. And 10-year auction prices of treasury bonds now at the second lowest yield of 2014. And that's good because the stocks will keep going up until, until they crash, I guess, which as you know, Martin Armstrong says third quarter of 2015. Hey, did you happen to catch Apple's news conference uh, yesterday? I mean, that was the big thing all day. Didn't do their stock any good. It wound up going down slightly for the day. But those new iPhones look good. I'm definitely getting an iPhone 6. It's just just a question of which model. The smaller 4.7-inch one or the 5.5, I'm not sure. And, you know, just which one fits better on my belt buckle. I like to wear the holster. Um, But I do like uh, the fact that they're coming up with bigger screens this is a concession to us, us aging baby boomers, because, you know, it's just I have to squint too much when I'm looking at my little iPhone 5. I've held off uh, getting a Samsung because security is just not as good. But according to every every security guy that I've talked to, not that the security is wonderful on the Apple. There are holes in it, but the holes on the Android uh, operating system, much greater. The other thing is that when it comes to media, which I like to have all of my shows on my phone at all times, the Android just not quite as good. And that's why I've always stuck with the Apple. I'm kind of an all Apple person. And, you know, the Apple's just always work better for me. Um, But it's kind of a personal preference type thing. This Ebola thing, you've been watching that, not looking real good. Uh, it's definitely spreading. Will it come here? I'm not going to panic over it, but perhaps. Not sure of that, but it could. No doubt, uh, definitely could spread here. Um, oh, by the way, 
Um, looking for gold, looking for diamonds. Uh, diamonds definitely have not taken the hit that gold has taken over the past three years. Colored diamonds have just been going crazy. Haven't really followed diamonds for years, but these colored diamonds have gone up like major, major, especially pink diamonds and behind them, blue diamonds. Our new sponsor, Tom Cloud. Tom is a veteran of the gold business, been in it 38 years. You can find him at cloudhardassets.com. Um, you can also call him on the phone, which I really do encourage you to do. Uh, it's always best that you make your first purchase from a new a new bullion provider on the phone personally. So if you're looking for diamonds, um, you're looking for gold, call up Tom Cloud, talk to him directly or one of his able assistants at 800-247-2812. 800-247-2812. He's our new precious metals diamond sponsor. And his markup on diamonds, unbelievably small, 8%. His markup on precious metals, uh, don't know the exact amount, but really lowest possible price. It's it's a mere few percent. And you check it out. If somebody's got a lower markup in the, than he, call him back. He'll match it. If it's not too crazy, if it's really crazy, then you got to wonder where you're getting your price from. The good thing is, though, if you heard about uh, Tom here on FSN, he will give you free shipping and free insurance, and he's the real deal. I'm a customer of his, and totally competitive prices. I like the guy a lot. He's not going anyplace. 38 years in business. Not too many other bullion guys around for that long. Hey, have you heard about what's going on in Atlantic City? Unbelievable. By the end of this year, four casinos will have closed their doors, maybe five. And, you know, the place has never been like a great place to go to. They were the second city in the U.S. to have legalized casino gambling. They thought the good times were going to last forever. They always were very surly, never treated the client very well. Food was eh, and the place was like falling down around you. You'd visit the casino, and then once you were done there, you just couldn't wait to get out of the place. Sometimes when the summer was nice, you'd take a walk on the boardwalk and fear for your life, and now the place is just becoming a ghost town because they opened up casinos in Connecticut they opened up some fake casinos in New York, and then the death knell was Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania opened up, I don't remember how many, but a bunch. And their casinos, evidently, they did things right and became quite successful, and they just took a huge bite out of uh, Atlantic City. Then you had racinos open in Delaware and in Maryland, and they couldn't get them to, to approve Sports betting in Atlantic City, the unions helped kill them. Uh, they had these very regimented rules in Atlantic City. Every casino had exactly the same games, like eight deck blackjack. And eight, eight deck blackjack could be real boring. Same exact rules in craps, same in roulette. And it just became a real boring type of cookie cutter type gambling. You go to Vegas, yeah, on the strip, same games, but you can find a two deck game, four deck game. You can find, you know, better paying odds at craps tables downtown. You know, you have diversity of games and people who gamble at casinos want variety and the entertainment in Vegas. Yeah. Sometimes there would be some good concerts, you know, in my gambling days, you know, go see the lot of different concerts there. But still, it was still Atlantic City, a place that you really went, did what you had to do, and got the hell out. And in latter years, some of the money started finding its way into the city. And, you know, they started doing some good things there. But then, uh, by then, it was too late because the competition was already here. And... And then the 
Great Recession, Depression started coming. And and all of a sudden, people realized that gambling was a discretionary expenditure. It wasn't a mandatory expenditure. And end of discussion. I mean, even in Vegas on the Strip, the... Uh, the drop, as they call it, is way, way down. Atlantic City's gambling revenues are 50% of what they used to be. Atlantic City, the casinos there used to be more profitable than those on the Strip, if you can believe it. And now they're run down. You go to the some of the casinos and they're just like really just falling apart in front of your very eyes. And, you know, you just look at it and you just... Don't want to be in the place. It's unwelcoming. Help isn't real friendly. And boy, forget about it. A good article here on our site from Money Morning by a guy named Shah Gelani, Capital Wave Strategist. He's talking about how the Federal Reserve is killing America and our economy is stagnating. Divide between the haves and the have nots is widening every day. Fewer and fewer good jobs and careers to be had. Worst of all, According to a survey by Nonprofit Employee Benefit Research Institute, 36% of workers have less than $1,000 in savings and investments that could be used for retirement, not counting their primary residence or defined benefit plans and traditional pensions. 60% of workers have less than $25,000. I'll leave it to you to go check it out on the site, but you see what, what's happening there. And it ain't good. Not a good thing at all. Um, hey, George Soros supposedly is betting $2 billion on a market crash. Um, follow him at risk. Uh, Scottish independence. What's going to happen there? That is potentially a devastating, uh, devastating development for the Western world. And, you know, Martin Armstrong wrote something about it. it says, whenever there's a movement for independence, the classic argument has been that they would fall flat on their face. And yet in this case, many British believe that Scotland has a lot of socialists who live off the state and therefore Scotland cost Brit Britain money and support for Scottish independence may even be higher inside Britain than in Scotland. And, you know, this election is coming up and, you know, he said a reader sent him something uh, relating to the situation when India sought independence. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, is Britain an, in, an alien power in uh, Scotland? You know, what's going to happen to Scotland uh, once they're free of the Brits? Well, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for that, but uh, I don't think it's going to be uh, be a positive uh, outcome. Do you? Hey, by the way, if you've got any uh, any comments, any articles, guests you'd like me to have on the show, or issues you'd like me to address, please uh, send it to khl at kerrylutz dot com. And I'm a little bit behind on the mail right now, but I will get back to it and. I will answer all email. I read it all. I promise. Here's here's a story that falls into the category that you just can't make this stuff up. Refinery loses one hundred fourteen million dollar chunk of gold. Uh, you know, this was from Jimmy Mengel at uh, Outsider Club, and he says he gets antsy when he loses my pocket change to the black hole in my car seat. But those quarters and dimes seem rather petty in comparison to what South Africa's Rand refinery recently let slip out of its pockets. Uh, the refinery lost an 87,000 ounce chunk of gold the size of a microwave oven. That would be worth $144 million at today's prices. And according to a statement from the refinery, like I say, you just can't make this stuff up. Uh, <laughs> you know, you just can't make this stuff up. Uh, you know, uh, following the adoption of the enterprise resource planning system in April last year, Rand Refinery experienced implementation difficulties, which have led to a difference between actual inventory 
and accounting records of approximately 87,000 ounces of gold. Uncertainty around the true position has prevented the company from being able to finalize its annual financial statements for the financial year ended September 2013. This information has been shared with the company's regulators, shareholders, insurers, and banks. That's a whole lot of gold. But in the grand scheme of Rand's history, it's a drop in the bucket. The refinery has processed 50,000 tons of gold since 1920. And that is a huge chunk of the total amount of gold existing in the world, recently estimated to be around 171,300 tons. And, you know, how do you like lose that much gold? That's what I'd like to know. Head should roll and, you know. I think uh, they better revamp their their new inventory control system um, before it's too late. Maybe it is too late already. And <laughs> yeah, you just you just got to wonder, huh? That's a lot of gold. And that's about it for us. This has been another Triple Lutz report. Kerry Lutz signing off. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.